Hi everyone. Let's start for today. So, yeah, because we we decided to go and talk a bit more about weak measurements, then our today's exercise class and the exercise sheet is about um, how we model the measurement, in particular how we couple to the pointer in a continuous case and in discrete case, and how we go from the strong measurement to the weak measurement. So the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna look at is how we how we couple a system to a continuous pointer uh, by using a coupling Hamiltonian, and then how we see that uh, in the final state of the system uh, is coupled to the state of the pointer, such that each state of the pointer is just a shifted state depending on uh, which state of the system we couple it to. So basically we're looking at continuous pointer. So we assume that we have two systems, S, which is the system of interest, and M, which is the pointer, or the measurement device. Um, and then the initial state of these two systems is a tensor product of the individual states where the system S is in the state uh, sum over I, CI, say sum over, um, yeah, CI, I, system S, where the I's are the eigenstates of the, of the measurement that we want to carry out. So say that the measurement that we want to carry out, which we'll label as operator MS, so we'll measure the operator MS, um, we write it as eigenbasis. So, J, J, and then we write the state of the system S um, with respect to that eigenbasis. Okay, and then we, we say that the initial state of the pointer is some eta m. So, for example, we can write that eta m in its position representation. So, it will be the integral of dx, um, let's say eta of x, x on m. Okay, and now we want to apply a uh, coupling Hamiltonian on these two systems, S and M, um, which would couple the measurement that we carry out on the system S with, so here we write the operator P, the momentum operator on the system M uh, with some coupling constant gamma. And we'll see that uh, if we couple, if the Hamiltonian we couple this measure, uh, this operator with the momentum, we'll get the shift in the position of the wave functions. One can also do the same if we take here the position operator on the system M instead of the momentum and get the shift in momentum. Uh, but now for all we, we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this Hamiltonian and apply it to the initial state of the system and see what happens. Okay, so before that, uh, let us just simply write what will be the unitary um, evolution of the state after, after time t. So we apply the Hamiltonian for time t, then the evolution is described by this exponential, and uh, we just write here the our Hamiltonian product M. Uh, then to, to see what this Hamiltonian corresponds to, uh, sorry, what this unitary corresponds to, we just write this exponential in terms of the, its Taylor series. So we just write it as a sum from n equals zero to infinity. Uh, here we get minus i gamma t to the power n 
n factorial and this tensor product to the power n would be just the uh, tensor product of the operators to the power n. Okay, um, then what is this operator uh, to the power n? Because here we've written it uh, in the uh, in its eigenbasis, so basically it's in its diagonal form. This is the same as multiplying n identical uh, diagonal matrices. So basically in the end we will still get the diagonal matrix, but with the elements aj to the power n, jj. Okay, let's substitute it here. So what we get would be the sum minus i gamma t to the power n factorial sum over j a j to the power n j j on s or tensor product r p, p to the power n so I, I'll take the uh, aj from here and put it in here. So, and I can rewrite this whole thing as sum over j, um, jj on s, tensor product, now write the other sum, minus i gamma t aj to the power n over n factorial. Uh, P M uh, to the power N. And this is, in fact, just Taylor series of the exponential of the operator of P with uh, some coefficient. So this is e to the power minus i gamma AJT PM. So basically, this unitary evolution can be written as just the following sum okay so this is what we got now we want to apply this to our initial state So we apply this to Psi SM. Okay, so yeah, let's label our final state as Phi SM. Um, then we write our evolution operator and apply it to the state which is the sum over i ti i on s tensor product eta on m um, so here i act on the each uh, Hilbert space individually so what i get in the end from i and j uh, scalar product, I would get that j equals to i. So I would just get sum over j, let's say. Cj, j on s. And then uh, e to the power minus i gamma ajt pm acting on eta m. Okay, so here you see that uh, starting from this state where these two systems are the system of interest and the uh, pointer are decoupled, here we arrive to the, um, to the state where, um, where the system of interest and pointer are coupled. So you, just, you have the sum over J and then the, um, yeah, the state of the system, of the state of the pointer is different for each of the uh, eigenstates of R observable. 
Okay, but now we want to know what is uh, what exactly the action of this operator. This you, this you might already remember from the quantum mechanics as the shift operator, and this is fairly easy to show. So let me just write this state on the pointer. And because I have the momentum operator, momentum operator in this um, in this unitary evolution, sorry, in this in this operator, uh, basically what what I would like to do then is to somehow act with this momentum operator onto the momentum state. So then I just write uh, my wave function or the pointer in terms of the momentum uh, wave function. So then this would be integral of dp, say eta of r of p, uh, p. However, I know that if I act with the function of the momentum operator onto the momentum operator, uh, what I get is um, just the basically the value of this operator at the point P. So this is easy to see because one, one thing you can do, you can just write this out as the Taylor series. Um, then you'll get PM to the power N acting on P. And this of course will be just P to the power P uh, P because uh, P is the eigenstate of the momentum operator with the value P. Okay, so basically what we get is then dP eta bar of P e to the power minus I gamma AJT P uh, P. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write out the, um, yeah, the eta of p, which is the momentum representation of a wave function in terms of the um, position representation. So then I get two integrals. Um, and yeah, the way we do it is just to apply a Fourier transform. Uh, dp dx e to the power minus i px uh, e to the power minus i gamma aj tp um, b p i guess eta of x p okay ah uh, yes and also the normalization here for the Fourier transform. Um, okay, so then I just group these two as e to the power minus i p x plus gamma a j t. Uh, and then I make the change of the variable in x, so I label this as our new x prime. Uh, which then becomes an X. Uh, and then I can write this as the integral of over dp dx e to the power minus ipx uh, eta of x minus gamma ajt p. Um, Okay, now I use um, the fact that I can also write p, um, so write x kets in terms of the p kets, and then basically uh, the first integral then disappears. So this would, so the integral with dp e to the power minus px ket p would give me ket x with this normalization, and I would arrive to integral over dx. Uh, eta of x minus gamma ajt x. Yeah, and this is all in the system M. OK, 
Okay, and this corresponds to the shift of the initial wave function in position by this um, this value, which is different for um, for different eigenvalues of the observable MS that we are measuring on the first system. So then, basically, for example, if your if your point uh, was initially in some, say, Gaussian state around x0, and then you measure measure just like some two-valued observable with um, a j a1 equals 1 and a2, uh, a2 equals minus 1, then you would get two shifted Gaussians, which would be coupled to... Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, one and two um, states of the of the measured system. Okay, uh, this is for example how one can explain um, the stern galach experiment. So one can see the stern galach experiment as um, as coupling of the spin to its. Uh, yeah, to its coordinates or momentum. Yeah, as I said, you can easily substitute uh, p here to x, and then instead of the uh, shift in position, you would get the shift in, in momentum. Um, and then, given given this coupling, you would you would have the um, the shift on the position of the particle in, on the screen. Okay. Um, yeah, if this is clear, then let us go to the next example, which is how we make um, measurements, strong and weak measurements on two qubits. So, so yeah, discrete systems. So one measurement, one strong measurement that you can do on on two qubits, you probably already know. So for example, um, if I have a qubit, one qubit which is initially in the state of zero plus one, and I want to measure it in um, in in a computational zero one basis, and I have a pointer, the initial state of which is zero. Uh, then I can just apply a C0 gate, um, and this will basically write down the result of our measurement into the pointer. So the final state would be this one. Uh, this is this is of course a strong measurement. Uh, because wh when you look at the pointer, or if you look at the pointer, then you will know the result of the of the of the measurement on the system S. Uh, and you can always write in this case. So, say we have C naught, which is uh, in terms of the brackets written as. So if the system is in a state zero, we don't do anything to a pointer. And if it's in a state one, then <clears throat> we flip the state of the pointer. Um, and say that if, if the initial state of the system S was not necessarily even a pure state, but just some state rho S, and the initial state of the pointer was zero, zero, then if we apply C naught on both sides, um, yeah, and then trace out the pointer, what we will get is basically 
Yeah, zero, zero, row A, zero, zero, plus one, one, row A, one, one. Um, so only the diagonal elements will survive. So we'll call this, we can also see it as just applying the usual projectors corresponding to zero and one outcomes. Yeah, and we can call this, say, the channel um, D of row A, <coughs> which corresponds to this um, strong measurement. So now the question is, can we make this measurement a weaker? So one way we can um, modify this measurement such that it becomes um, weaker or um, obtain some characterization which allows us to become weaker is we just substitute the um, controlled X gate here by just a controlled uh, rotation gate about the x-axis of the block sphere. So basically what we would have is, again, two systems. Ah, oh, yes, I flipped the notation here. Say S, 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 S. Sorry for that. Um, so yeah, we have row S and zero on the pointer. And then we just apply this controlled rotation um, and the angle theta. So what is this rotation? Rotation is e to the power minus i uh, theta over 2x. And in the matrix form, it can be written as uh, cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2 i minus i sine theta over 2 and cosine theta over 2. So yeah, so you can verify it by just expand, writing the uh, Taylor series expansion of this. Okay, so in this case, this controlled gate, let's go with u, uh, can be written as, okay, if, if the system is in a zero, I don't do anything. And if the system is in a state one, I apply a, a controlled rotation on the pointer. So you can already see why this measurement will be weak, because if we just take our rotation gate uh, and apply it to the zero state of the pointer, then what we get is uh, cosine theta over two, um, zero on the pointer minus, yeah, minus I sine theta over two, state one on the pointer. And you see that when we kind of write the results of our measurement or couple it uh, to the pointer, we write the results uh, for the measurements of zero and one on the system into states which are, are not necessarily orthogonal. So there are always values of theta for which this state to which we write the result, to which we couple the one result, um, is not orthogonal to the state zero in which we, to which we essentially couple the zero result. And hence, uh, we get a weaker uh, measurement. Okay, but now let us just write the final state after applying this unitary. So let's say rho sm prime. This is just u. Uh, rho s times the product 0, 0 on the pointer. U dagger. Okay, so let us just write it. So 
You can also start calculating because this is just... one long calculation. So here we have row S tensor product zero zero M and again we have the U dagger. Okay. So I'll just write it as the sum of the terms. Corresponding to different elements of the row S matrix. So first one I have zero, zero, RS, zero, zero, tensor product, um, this, this, and this. So it will be just zero, zero on M plus, um, so say zero, one row S. Mm, oh no, this will not appear. So it will be zero, zero, one, one. Um, so be zero, zero. The first term here, here, and here. So what we will get is uh, Rx dagger of theta acting on our bra of 0m. So what we will get is cosine theta over 2, 0, 0 plus i sine theta over 2, cat 0, bra 1 on m. OK. Then 1, 1, rho s, 0, 0. Similarly, this will be cosine theta over 2, um, 0, 0 on m minus i sine theta over 2, 1, 0 on m. And finally, the last component, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1. So here we have the Rx acting on both sides, um, on the Brian cat of, of 0, 0, m. So what we'll get is cosine theta over 2, mm, 0, minus i sine theta over 2, 1, multiplied by cosine theta over 2, 0 plus i sine theta over 2. So, sorry, do this. The bra, and here also the bra. Okay, now we want to see what is the state of the system. After this measurement, for this, we'll need to trace out the pointer. So then when we sum up over the um, over the basis basis states of the pointer, uh, the there are only a few actually uh, terms from here which will which will survive. So for example, this one will not survive, this one will not survive because here um, it's not a diagonal element uh, for for the pointer then this combination will not survive and this combination will also not survive. So we only will be only be left with the following. So the first term will be there. The 
plus the second term with the only four cosine. The third term only for the cosine. Yes, and in the fifth term, we'll have just one, one. Oh, I keep saying root A. This is very pathological for me. Um, one, one. Yeah, so here we would have a uh, one, 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 because we would have the cosine squared plus the sine squared, which gives us one. So basically, these are the matrix elements of the initial matrix of the system S. And so if we say that the initial matrix was, say, A, B, uh, B conjugate C, then it's mapped to A, B cosine theta over two, B conjugate cosine theta over two, uh, C. So you can see that uh, while the strong measurement actually gives us a mapping um, which which where we get rid of the off diagonal terms. Here for the weak, weak version, we still keep the diagonal terms. And in fact, this can be written as the following. So we can just say, oh, that's our initial matrix multiplied by cosine theta over two plus one minus cosine theta over two. Um, the D of row S, where D of row S is this strong measurement. So this weak measurement can be seen as um, just probabilistically applying the strong measurement. So with probability cosine theta over two, we keep our state. And then with probability one minus cosine theta over two, we, um, yeah, we apply a strong measurement. Okay, um, is this clear how to do weak measurements on two qubits? Okay, so yeah, there is one more thing left, so I will not do a break. So after I finish the, the next thing, we can, we'll do, I'll, you'll be free. So now we'll still be talking about the um, two qubits and a qubit pointer, but we'll consider kind of another way to, um, to tune for a, for a weak measurement. So one, one thing about C naught and controlled gates as they seen in quantum computing, um, which is not like very um, beautiful is that Actually, if you look at the C naught, it's not symmetric in some sense, because basically what you do, you say, oh, I measure, I measure a system in zero one basis. And then in some case, the state of the pointer does not change. So if I measure zero, then I keep my point in state zero. And this is somehow um, slightly counterintuitive um, to the, I don't know, usual physical experiments where you would have, oh, I'm, me I'm measuring a spin. If the spin is up, yeah, I'll find my particle somewhere um, like away from, like a bit up on the screen. If if it's down, I'll, I'll, I'll find it a bit below the origin on the screen and so on in the stein gellach experiment. So in some sense, one can also uh, think about the qubit measurement 
or qubit coupling, which would do the same. And in fact, for this, we just need to rotate the initial state of the pointer. So we can still map the pointer to 0 and 1 uh, while measuring 0 and 1, but the initial state has to be, um, in some sense, equidistant from them. So one can imagine a block sphere, and then if we, for example, choose the measurement, sorry, the point uh, initial state of the point as plus, then we would need to rotate in a different directions uh, for to get zero, um, to put it in a zero one. Okay. And in fact, if you write such a, if you come up with such a symmetric qubit coupling, it's much easier to write a Hamiltonian for the, for for such a coupling. So as a as one thing you can do at home, you can you can try to derive the Hamiltonian for C naught. It's quite ugly. It's going to be some coupling of the operators plus the constant. It will not look like very nice. But for example. Let me call it, I don't know, symmetric. Qubit coupling. If we start, we have the system in this state uh, and the initial state of the pointer is the plus and I measure in um, computational basis, then also I can come up with a unitary which does the following transformation. So it just takes the initial state of these two things and maps it to the same final state as we would get in the scene of. So, um, uh, basically, the, the intuition for writing a Hamiltonian for this is the following. So, clearly, the measured observable uh, on the system S is the Z operator, because we are measuring in computational basis. And um, the observable, and Basically, what would so the the state of the pointer is the eigenvalue of the um, x operator, and the state of the system is the eigenvalue of the z operator. So somehow, like to to put them together, you need we need to rotate about uh, y axis. So in a sense, from from this. Um, intuition, one can say that the observable, sorry, the, the operator to which we need to couple on the pointer is somehow proportional to the y operator. Okay, and then the idea is that you need to write the Hamiltonian on these two systems which performs these transformations. So it will be something like gamma zs tensor product ym, you just need to find the gamma. So, and this, this, this you'll be able to find from just writing u uh, as e to the power minus i h. And in principle, for without loss of generality, you can also assume that t is equal to 1 or whatever t is fixed. Okay, and then basically having this, uh, this strong measurement, so of course this is a strong measurement, uh, one can also make it weak. And the way we make it weak directly from the Hamiltonian uh, we can change the constant here. 
or for example, we can, uh, so either we change the strength of the coupling or we change, for example, the time for which we run this Hamiltonian. And in that case, um, yeah, you will have something with parameter in the Hamiltonian and then the states, uh, you can write down the joint state depending on that parameter, which we can call theta, um, and also the reduced states of the system and the pointer, and also try to write them out in the same way we did it in that exercise, um, interpreting it as probabilistic application of the strong measurement. And uh, also write the uh, reduced state of the pointer and see which, with which probability. Um, basically, what is the informational gain of the measurement that you do on the pointer? So um, basically, for example, the probability of um, measuring zero on the pointer would be some, some constant depending on theta plus some function depending on theta um, and the probability of measuring zero if we just make a strong measurement on the, on the system. And basically this would be your informational gain from that measurement on the pointer. Okay, so basically, yeah, we covered how, how to do couplings um, to the pointers and in continuous case and in discrete case uh, and how to basically tune this measurement such that they, they become weak depending on the parameter you insert in Hamiltonian. Okay, um, are there any questions? Yes. Ah, um, whether we have the same thing in the continuous case. Um, let me think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure you can write it as easily. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure. Like, what would the um, strong measurement channel correspond to? Because in a continuous case that we considered, um, like we would couple to the shifted, uh, shifted, shifted wave functions of the initial wave function. And um, unless this, there is a finite support of that function, this, fu this wave functions would always overlap. So for example, if you take two Gaussians, even if you shift one and shift the other, they would still overlap. So in that sense, kind of these continuous measurements, they're always weak. They can be seen as strong, like approximately, or again, if you have finite support, but uh, of course in experimental settings, you would probably not have finite support. Okay, no more questions? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, see you next week.